Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Daniel Indrajaya. I'm the lead pastor here at The Rocks Church. I want to take this opportunity to wish you an early Merry Christmas. You have a lot of time yet, husband, to do your Christmas shopping. Today is the 8th of December. There's still 17 days to Christmas. This is just a free public service announcement to all of you. Hey, <laughs> if you are uh, new to The Rocks Church, uh, I just want to say this, that our slogan around here is no perfect people allowed. If you think that you need to get your life together before you come to church, I'm here to tell you that is not the case at all. The reason why we Christians gather here every Sunday is not because we think we are better than the rest of the world. It's not because we think we are perfect. But we gather here every Sunday because we believe we have a God who loved us just as we are. And He proved that love 2,000 years ago when He sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins, whose birth we celebrate this Christmas season. So it doesn't matter who you are, what you've done, what you have not done, you are welcome in this place. Journey together with us in this journey that we call life, all right? I don't know about you, but I just love Christmas. I don't know why. I love everything there is to love about Christmas. I love the food, I love the Christmas caroling, I love the singing, I love the gift giving, and more so, gift receiving, right? <laughs> Even though the Bible says it is more blessed to give than to receive, but let me tell you, receiving is not that bad. If you don't believe me, try to give me something. See if I like it or not, all right? I'll prove you wrong. Um, it reminds me of a story about these two young boys who were spending the night at their grandparents. And at nighttime, they, they knelt beside their beds to pray a prayer before they go to bed. And the younger brother began praying out loud from the top of his lungs, I pray for a new bicycle. I pray for a Nintendo. And his older brother leaned over and nudged him. You don't have to shout your prayer. God is not deaf, you know. And the younger brother said, I know, but grandpa is. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if you are a follower of Jesus Christ or not. I don't know if you believe in God or not. But whatever your view is of God, I respect that. I'm not here to shove religion down your throat. Because I didn't grow up as a Christian. I, I didn't like it when people tried to shove their religion down my throat. But this evening... If you allow me, I would like to share how I came to faith, how I came to believe in Jesus Christ, and how it was the best decision that I've ever made and made the most difference in my life. And I believe if you give me a chance, if you want to, you can have that experience as well. And I'm here to just share my experience with you. All right? Now, for the Rock Celebrate Christmas 2019, we pick a theme, the light of the world. It's actually taken from the very word of Jesus Christ himself. In the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says this, I am the light of of the world. Isn't that amazing? Isn't it just beautiful? He's not just the light of the Jewish people. He's not just the light of the Christian people. He's not just the light for one particular nation. He's the light of the whole world. That's why I love it when we sang that song, Joy to the World, in different languages. I love it because that's just Jesus. That's just God. You know, I keep telling people this. If you are racist, you're not going to like heaven very much. Because in heaven, people from all tribes, nations, and tongues are going to be there worshiping the one true God, and it's going to be amazing, all right? I remember speaking, at, I don't know when, but I remember speaking to a, an elderly Asian man, and I, I told him about Jesus, about Christianity, and he said, no, I don't want to believe in Christianity because Christianity is a Western religion. And I told him, in the first place, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. In the second place, Jesus Christ was born in the Middle East. If anything, Christianity is an Eastern religion. But that's besides the point, all right? Jesus says, I am the light of the whole world. Whoever follows me will never, never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, what did Jesus mean when he says, I am the light of the world? I want to take some time to just uh, break this down a little bit, all right? Uh, first, you're going to ask, what is the nature and purpose of light? In the physical world, light creates life. Do you know that? Uh, if 
our earth had no sun, there wouldn't be any life here on earth. See, every living being on earth relies on the light from the sun in order to exist. And this is exactly what John says at the beginning of his gospel in John chapter 1. Uh, John says this, Through Jesus, all things were made. Without Jesus, nothing was made that has been made. In other words, John was saying this, Hey, you know this Jesus guy? He's different from any other religious leaders that you know. Because Jesus is the creator God himself who came in the flesh. Jesus is God with skin on. He came in the flesh because guess what? Jesus is the creator. He is not the created. He is the creator. So before there was a sun... Before there was a moon, before there was any light, Jesus was the light already. And, and this is what John says in verse 4, In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. In other words, light means life. So if you go back to John chapter 8 again, when Jesus says, I am the light of the world, what Jesus was trying to say is this, I, I came to this world to give you life. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. See, Jesus is not only able to give you life, He says, I am the life. He's not only able to teach you the truth, He says, I am the truth. He's not just able to show you the way. A lot of religious leaders can show you the way. Jesus says, no, I am the way. See, I came here for you. I'm not against you. I'm here for you. And then He continues, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. See, you're smart. If light means life, that means darkness means death right? That's the opposite of light, darkness is. So what Jesus is trying to say is this, I came to this world to give you the best gift that you could ever receive, and that is the gift of eternal life. You know that when this life is over, there's an, another life waiting for us, and this life will last for eternity. And Jesus says, you don't get this eternal life, uh, you know, by doing good works. You don't get this eternal life by going to church or read your Bible. No, this eternal life, according to the Scriptures, is actually a free gift to all mankind. It's a gift. None of us deserve it because we all made mistakes, we all sin and all that. None of us can work for it. That's why God, because He loves us, us so much. He gave us, you know, through Jesus Christ, this gift of eternal life. All you need to do is just to believe Him for it. Just like parents and children. You know, children don't have to do anything. They just need to trust their parents, right? And that's exactly what Jesus says. And the good news is this. Not only is Jesus able to give us eternal life, but guess what? He cares about your life here on earth as well. What is dead in your world right now? Is your marriage dead? Is your financial world dead? Is your relationship dead? You know, Jesus is able to shine light into those areas in your life that, that are dead. If you don't believe me, let me prove it to you. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, it is actually one of the seven I am sayings of Jesus recorded for us in the Gospel of John. Uh, in John chapter 6, for example, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never hunger. That means, you know, you will never die. You know, He's the bread of life. But guess what? You know, Jesus is not only able to give you eternal life, this eternal bread, He can give you the earthly bread as well. That's why, you know, uh, it was recorded in John chapter 6, the miracle of Jesus feeding 5,000 men, not including women and children, maybe about 10,000 people, simply by using five loaves of bread and two fish. That was the one of the greatest miracles of Jesus Christ. Jesus is trying to tell you, you know, if you can't trust me with your earthly life, how can you trust me for eternal life? That's why Jesus wanted to prove to you that He's able to even work in your life right now. Now in John chapter 8, when He says, I am the light of the world, He proves it in the next chapter by healing a man that was born blind. Like he never saw anything in his life and Jesus gave him light. Suddenly he was able to see so that Jesus can prove to all of us that He is not only able to give you eternal life, but He can give you life right now here on earth as well. So that's... 
uh, that's that, all right? But if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, okay, here's another part of this. Now, Jesus wants us to be the light of the world to other people. Listen to what Matthew says in Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. You don't do that. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, this Christmas season, when you give the light of Jesus to this dark world, you are following the will of Jesus Christ, the will of God. As a church, last month, we gave $30,000 to not-for-profit organizations in our community because we want to be the light in our community. And this Christmas season, one of our members, her name is Jennifer Dittman. Uh, she's a single mom with two really, really young children, Sam and Abigail. And Sam is in the uh, autism spectrum. And it's hard, you know, I can't imagine a life as a single mom with special needs child at that. And, and she never takes care of, you know, her own needs first. She always takes care of the needs of her children first. And she never pampers herself. So we decided this Christmas season to pamper her, to give her a bit of a makeover. And, and she thought it was only that. But John and Mike and Sidara went to her house to actually do a, a bit of spy work because we wanted to surprise her. Let's take a look. Hey fam, we're on the way to do some recon. That's right, we're gonna go recon Jen's house and see what can be done there. So Sid's gonna go in and do some patrolling per se and yep. some recon action. We'll get some photos and videos. focusing on the kids and everybody else never have time for me so the idea that somebody can see me when I feel invisible so. no <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna make me cry too <laughs> being mum to a special needs kid and another one that's turning out to be that way I get invisible of course so to have someone actually have seen me and not see me as just my kid's mum. Yeah. It is an amazing feeling. Oh. Well, this time is all about you, Jen. <laughs> and this is totally for you to be seen, for you to be pampered, for you to be spoiled, and just so that you know that there are people who love you and who are in your corner. Thank you. So let's go and get yeah, this pampering on the, road, on the way. Paige. She's going to be our hairstylist extraordinaire for Jen's beautiful hair makeover. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for helping make today a special one for Jennifer. We wanted to choose someone who's going through a challenging season so that we can show them that they are loved and God sees them even amidst the hard times. Jen has no idea we're here right now, so when she gets home, she's gonna be so surprised to see what we've done. So I wanna thank you so much for making this awesome message of Christmas a reality for her. What you wish you could do for all, you do for one. So 
Jen, firstly, surprised. <laughs> so, you are so welcome. It's our pleasure. So, while you and Sam were in school and we took mommy to have her hair done, it was just part of the surprise because while you were away, this glorious bunch here, with the help of Bev, have cleaned up the house and the outside and washed up and put a Christmas tree up that you can decorate with all of your ornaments. <laughs> We've got some there. And we know that this time of year, I know that we were having a conversation last week that it's not the easiest time of year financially. There's a lot of medical stuff going on as well. And so we thought we'd take some of the pressure off. And you know that Christmas list and birthday list that you showed me? <laughs> well, there's some stuff on the Christmas list for Abby and the birthday list. Sam, there's some stuff for you in there as well. And Jen, there's some stuff for you in there as well because you take care of everybody else. Abby, Jen, and Sam from us at The Rocks, happy Christmas. Thank we love you. You know, Jesus, he's not only the light of the world, but he wants to be the light in your world. And Jesus is using all of us, followers of Jesus Christ, to shine that light. Your life will only be meaningful when you leave it for other people. But if you're not yet a follower of Jesus Christ, in John 3.16 it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. Whoever believes in Him, not whoever behaves in Him, but whoever believes in Him will not die but have everlasting life. Now, I want to give you that opportunity to receive that gift because a gift is only a gift if you receive it. Um, God is knocking on your door right now, the door of your heart. If you open your heart and you say, Jesus, I want my sins forgiven. I want that free gift of eternal life. I know that you see me, even though a lot of people maybe don't see me, and I want that gift. If that's you, I want to lead you in a prayer, and I just want you to follow after me. It's not a magical prayer, but God sees what's inside your heart, and God will be true to His promise. He will give you eternal life. Now, I want all the Christians to repeat after me as well as a sign of our support for our new brothers and sisters in Christ. Would you repeat after me? Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. I don't deserve it. But Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins. And I believe Him. Thank you so much for forgiving me my sins and giving me this gift that I don't deserve. No one can take that away from me. I will spend eternity with you forever and ever. Help me to shine your light to the people around me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, can we give a huge round of applause to those who pray that prayer for the first time? I prayed that prayer the first time about 20-something years ago, and it changed my life forever. It's the best decisions that you will ever make in your life. And if you pray that prayer, we want to help you in your new journey of faith. So on your way out, you will have hosts holding their Bibles, you know. Uh, make sure you grab one copy before you go home. Uh, if you don't see them, go to the connection desk. If we run out, I think we gave away a lot of Bibles this morning. Uh, make sure you just give your name, and we'll make sure we give one to you when we next uh, have them, all right? But can we give them a huge round of applause one more time, those who pray the prayer for the first time. God bless you.